What up, nerds? Welcome back. Um, today we're going to be talking about atmosphere. We are moving on from oceans, getting into the atmosphere. So we have now gone from, so we've now done <clears throat> geosphere, we've done hydrosphere, now we're moving to atmosphere. After this, we will move into biosphere, and then finally exosphere, which is space and astronomy. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so uh, first thing about the atmosphere that a lot of people don't know is that there are actually several layers starting from the bottom and moving up. Okay, so as you can see, atmosphere is a mixture of gases that surrounds the Earth. That is its official definition. Pardon any noise. My cat is being annoying. Uh, atmosphere provides us with the oxygen we need to breathe. Okay, protects us from the sun's harmful rays. Uh, provides us with the aurora borealis. Lots of interesting things happen in the atmosphere. Okay, the different layers are set up based on temperature and based on composition, so based on what they're actually made of. So, Earth's entire atmosphere is 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, 1% argon and carbon dioxide, and then a teeny tiny, tiny, tiny bit of other gases like, um, you know, methane or ozone or anything like that. Okay, so we're going to start with the highest uh, layer of the atmosphere, the one just before you actually hit space. This is the thermosphere. Okay, the thermosphere is the uppermost layer of the atmosphere. Think of the world as a globe, right? So when we're talking about the uppermost layer, if like my fist is the core of the globe, is like this right here, the atmosphere is what is surrounding it, right? So the thermosphere is the uppermost layer, the one that is highest above the actual rock of the earth itself okay so remember that it's not just linear this isn't just like a flat thing the earth is not flat uh it is in fact a globe and the atmosphere is surrounding it <clears throat> so the thermosphere is the highest layer it's all it's way up here okay uh and remember that we're talking about these layers in terms of temperature and composition so the temperature in the thermosphere gets much higher, it gets higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. I can exceed up to 1,000 degrees, but it still feel very cold. And the reason for this is that it's essentially in space at this point. So what you have going on here is that you have very little air, very few air particles actually up here, like bouncing around. So they're not retaining any heat, so it feels cold. But the temperature is very, 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 very high because it's getting direct and unfiltered uh, radiation from the sun. That's why the temperature is so high. So this is uh, between 80 and 1,000 kilometers above Earth's surface. Okay. All right. So next layer down is the mesosphere. Okay, this is our middle layer. Meso means middle. Thermo means heat or temperature. So meso is the middle layer. This is the coldest layer. This is the one right here. Okay. And the temperature decreases as altitude increases. So as you get higher, you can see right here the temperature is going down. In case it wasn't clear, Temperature is on this axis, so as it moves left and right, temperature is decreasing versus increasing, okay? And then this is altitude. So the mesosphere, you can see that the temperature it decreases as you get higher. This is between 50 and 80 kilometers above Earth's surface. The stratosphere is probably one that people have heard of before, okay? This is kind of your layer uh, that this contains the ozone layer. Okay, and because of the ozone layer, temperature in this area actually goes up as uh, you get higher because the ozone is retaining a lot of that heat and some of the heat is bouncing, uh, some of the, t the energy is bouncing off from the ozone layer and uh, going back out into space. Okay, cat. So that is that. This is between 10 and 50 kilometers above Earth's surface. Okay. So this is also this is the area where you're gonna get your weather balloons. This is the area where supersonic planes, jet planes, okay, like army planes are gonna be or air force are gonna be uh flying. The troposphere, this is the lowest layer of the atmosphere. This is where we live, where all weather uh happens. Um you know this is this is real low in terms of atmosphere because you know we said the thermosphere starts 
between like 80 and 200 or something like that. You know, mesosphere is all the way up by 70 or 80. Stratosphere is up by 50. The troposphere is all the way down. It's the first 10 kilometers of the atmosphere. So this is what, like if this is, again, if our sphere is in here, this troposphere is what's right on the surface. Okay. So, and we can see that the troposphere uh, does one other thing that's really important. The temperature decreases as altitude increases. Okay, and that is because as you get higher up into uh, the troposphere, the air becomes thinner. It's not as dense. And with fewer particles around um, to, you know, bank off of each other, it does not retain as much heat. So as a quick little um, review, starting at the troposphere, temperature decreases as you go up because it gets less dense. When you hit the stratosphere, temperature increases because the ozone layer is retaining a lot of the energy from the sun. When you hit the mesosphere, temperature decreases very, very rapidly because it's even less dense up there, so you're getting even less retention of energy. And then when you hit the exosphere, or excuse me, sorry, the thermosphere, when you hit the thermosphere, uh, the temperature goes up very, very, very fast because there's almost nothing to filter the uh, energy from the sun. Okay. Okay. And so you can see this again here. So troposphere, um, you know, as you can see, so temperature is here on the bottom. Okay. Altitude is over here. So troposphere temperature decreases as you go up. In the stratosphere, it increases. Mesosphere, it decreases. Thermosphere, it increases. In the thermosphere, all the way up like 200 miles, or excuse me, 200 kilometers up, that's where you're going to be getting the aurora. The aurora borealis or the aurora... Um, uh, oralis, okay, those things are going to be happening all the way up in the thermosphere. A lot of people think they're a lot lower down. They're really not. They're way up there, okay? Okay, so an important thing to talk about when we're talking about the atmosphere is we have to talk about heat and heat transfer, okay? So what heat is, is the energy transfer from one object to another because of a difference. Now, what I mean by that is that you know, if you feel your forehead right now, it's going to either feel warm or cold, okay? And the reason for that is because there's a difference in temperature between your hand skin and your forehead skin, okay? That difference in temperature causes heat to transfer, okay? It causes energy to transfer from one to the other, and when you detect that, that feeling that you're, that you're feeling is heat, okay? It's that radiation of energy. Now what temperature is, is temperature is a measure of the average energy of the atoms and molecules in a substance. So we measure this in Fahrenheit, Celsius, Kelvin. So the temp the internal body temperature most people have is around 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, right? But that's not necessarily true on the surface, okay? Because your internal body temperature needs to stay the same, but on the surface it can very a good amount. And so that's that heat, that's that um, temperature difference causes heat, causes a heat transfer. Okay. This is, so there's many types of heat transfer. The three that we're going to talk about are convection, conduction, and radiation. Okay. So radiation is one that's fairly uh, easy to kind of I, I identify or, or figure out. Uh, it's just the transfer of energy through electromagnetic waves. Um, and we see this in different ways. So we see this in light waves. We see this in heat waves. Um, so here's a great example. Okay, solar radiation on the Earth. So solar radiation is just very intense um, electromagnetic waves, okay, in the forms of visible light, ultraviolet light, and infrared light, okay? So when the solar radiation hits the Earth, three things happen. Either the energy is absorbed directly by an object, Okay, so you can see here on this little graphic, let me move my my person. You can see here on this little graphic, 50% of direct and diffused radiation is absorbed by land and sea. So 50% of all of this 100% radiation up here is absorbed directly. Okay, the energy could travel through an object instead of being absorbed. So uh, some of it travels through the clouds or just straight through the atmosphere. Or it can be reflected back. 
right? And so that's what you see here is that it either hits the surface and reflects. That's why we can even see anything because light hits something and reflects into our eyes, which is then processed by our brain. Okay, and so the light and or heat can reflect back up. And so 30% of all of the radiation that hits Earth is lost back to space by reflection and scattering. Okay. Now conduction is a different type of heat transfer. So this is transfer of heat energy through a solid object. Okay. So this is if I were to, this is why like if you're um, cooking on a stove top, right, and you're holding the pan, you're holding it by the handle, everything's fine. The handle is in no way touching the burner is in no way touching the heat source, but it still heats up. That's because the pan is hot and that heat is being conducted back through the solid object to your hand and to the handle, okay? And that's what it looks like kind of like here. The direct heat source is touching this object here, but conduction, all the little atoms are knocking against each other and the heat still transfers down the object the other way, okay? And then convection is one we should be very familiar with because we talked about it with in the geosphere with um, mantle, okay, with the asthenosphere, the convection currents down there. We talked about it in the ocean with convection currents um, going with cold water uh, sinking down and moving towards the uh, equator and then warm water near the equator uh, kind of rising and moving towards the poles, okay. It's the same, exact same thing happens with the atmosphere okay convection is the transfer of heat energy through movement of a liquid or gas so if you boil water it does this or as you can see here we have air currents okay so near the equator especially near the equator especially where it's really warm it, uh, the air is going to rise because that's what fluids do when they uh, heat up they heat up they become less dense and that uh, lowered density makes them float up higher. Okay, so it rises up higher into the atmosphere. But as we just saw that the different layers, higher in the atmosphere, it gets much colder. So it starts to cool down. But it moves towards an area where there is a, uh, the least amount of extra temperature or the least amount of stuff that it's floating on top of. Okay, so it as it cools down, it kind of moves over here, sinks by the poles. And then it will move off either direction or any direction. And as it is closer to the surface, it'll warm back up until it gets to the equator. It gets very, very warm and rises again. Okay, And all of this current, all of this movement of air, I mean, think about it. What would movement of air be? If you walk outside and you feel air moving past you, what is that? Well, that's wind. Okay, And that's one of the, uh, that's one of the main reasons we have weather. Okay, There you go. Wind is just the movement of air caused by differences in air pressure, okay, and uh, convection currents and other things like that. The greater the difference in pressure, the faster the wind moves. So we've talked about like high pressure versus low pressure systems, okay, you've heard that before. We'll talk about that more when we do uh, meteorology, but for now just be aware that wind happens because air is moving to uh, fill a difference in pressure. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk briefly about humidity now and this will actually lead us nicely into uh, our next topic which we'll cover next video okay so what humidity is a lot of people don't fully understand it's just the amount of water vapor that is in the air okay and relative humidity is a little bit more difficult so relative humidity is the amount of moisture that's in the air compared to what the air can quote unquote hold at that temperature or at that time right so you know at low temperatures water is going to be coming out of the air much more easily. That's why whenever it's cold outside and you breathe, you get that little bit of uh, fog out of your out of your mouth because your uh, breath is hotter than the air around you, so the water uh, vaporizes. Whereas at higher temperatures, you know, the, the air has a lot more space to move around. It can, quote-unquote, hold a lot more water. Okay, so when air is holding all the water it can at a given temperature, it's said to be saturated, and you hit the dew point. Okay? which we hit right here. The dew point, uh, this is the temperature at which a gas condenses into a liquid. Okay, that's why in the morning when it's colder, you find dew on the grass, okay? So at its dew point, the air is saturated, which means that uh, it is full of water. It cannot have any more water in there, and so any extra water that is in the air comes out as water, okay, as liquid water. Uh, so 
dew point very much depends on temperature and the amount of water in the air. So this chart is uh, pretty handy because this shows you that the green line is when you're at 50% relative humidity, or the air is able to hold about 50% of the possible water. Okay, so at zero degrees Celsius, that's that's a freezing. Okay, that is the freezing point of water. You can see that your relative humidity for 50% versus 100%, very small difference. Okay, you don't need a lot of water in the air. You really, really don't for it to come out, which is why, again, at really cold temperatures, you breathe, you're adding water into the air, and it's immediately becoming um, a liquid for a split second until it diffuses out and the temperature goes down. Okay, but at higher temperatures, 30 degrees Celsius, okay, so this is closer to like 75, 80 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, you can see that your relative humidity numbers are much higher. So you can have a lot more water in the air. And then once you get up to 50 degrees, which is very, very hot, that is like outside of normal weather conditions, you can see it gets even higher. Okay, so use this. as you can see, there's exponential growth. Okay, and that is going to be the last thing we talk about for this video. So next video is going to be talking about um, condensation and the types of clouds. It should be a little bit smaller of a video, um, and that will be uh, the main things that we do for atmosphere as far as video lectures. Be on the lookout for meteorology. Okay, uh, meteorology, there's going to be weather, uh, weather systems, storms, things like that, weather station models. There's going to be a lot of practice with those, so keep your eyes out. Okay, but uh, until then, I will see you in the next video on clouds. Gucci.